Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I know the last time we spoke, I was headed to surgery the following day. That's all worked out very well. Gallbladder is gone. Um, doing well. So it's about a week and a half. Uh, probably not resting as much as a doctor would like, but we got a helicopter to build. So uh, let me show you what we've done since then. And by the way, thanks for all the kind words and best wishes from all of you regarding the surgery. It worked. Thank you. So here we are, uh, where we left off last time, I think I was doing some, we had the rotor head installed up there. Um, I'm on a 15 pound weight limit right now for a few weeks, so I can't do very heavy stuff. Did manage to get some of the shock absorbers up there and some of the control rods installed. All the linkages are left kind of loose right now because we're gonna have to do a lot of rigging on the helicopter once it's all together. And up there, you'll notice some blue tape. There's blue tape up there on the rotor head. There's blue tape on bolts right here. I don't know if I've ever talked about the use of blue tape in the videos. I know I talk about it in some of my columns, but I make a habit of keeping a roll of blue painter's tape in the shop. So if I have something that's not completely finished, I know I have to go back to it. It's a big blue flag. In this case, with the 15 pound uh, limit on me right now, like these bolts on the rear pylon, they require almost 100 foot pounds of torque to tighten those. So clearly I can't do that now. The same thing with some of the larger bolts up there on top. They're just very difficult to get to and somewhat awkward. So there goes the blue painter's tape. Last time we were here, we were uh, hoping to get the engine installed. I think you saw it hanging from the airframe. Uh, I know what some of you are thinking, that's more than 15 pounds. That A-frame was wonderful. I, I, I hardly used any muscle at all. We just hooked it in two places with two different lifts, set it at the angle, and it slid right into the mounts. It's actually much uh, easier on these straight mounts, even though they're uh, Lord mounts here, than the dynafocals on the aircraft because we're not fighting four angled bolts. These were all straight. So the engine is in, and if you look up here, we also have the fan assembly which has the clutch in it. I think I've talked about that in a prior video. And then the coupling. You know, I thought I'd be wise and get all ahead and I hung the engine and put all this together. And then I had to do this bell mouth shroud. So I know we've talked about setbacks before. I can't tell you how frustrated I was with myself just trying to jump ahead while I was waiting on stuff. So all of this had to come back out. Uh, clutch apart. There's a bunch of bolts in there that required new safety wires. And uh, anyway, it's all back together now after a lot of rework, which I hate. So the engine is hung. I've started doing some of the plumbing. We're getting some of the fuel lines done. Matter of fact, later today, we're gonna to do another video for you showing how to do some of the fuel hoses. Um, and uh, all the oil lines are on. And then what I did was move ahead to do the baffling. Baffling takes a lot of work, no matter what airplane or aircraft you're working on. Uh, in this case with a helicopter, since we don't have a cowling on this side of it, where typically you'll just put the rubber baffling along the edges of the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the rubber stuff around the edges, we have to make a top as well. So it took almost all of this week. Luckily, again, it's only stand up. They're very light pieces. Um, and, you know, we, all the end pieces are on the sides and then had the top to enclose this whole thing. So you can see cooling air here will get sucked in by the fan, come across the engine, and then exit out. It's still a downdraft air-cooled engine, so it's going to work the same way. The baffling was very nicely, you know, provided in the kit, uh, although I did notice something I want to share with all of you because uh, sometimes we all have cooling problems, and I've been involved in a number of, uh, you know, trying to solve cooling issues. And one of the things I noticed right away in this baffling was that uh, it was curved. These are the end baffles, and they just curve to go around the bottom of the cylinders here. The idea is that you want to force air across these cylinders and down, and then keep it wrapped around that cylinder and just exit at the bottom. If you just let it exit straight down, you're going to have higher temps than what you would like to achieve. So the way you do that is I've added these angles at the bottom and then at each end we'll use safety wire or a rod i'm showing you how these are set up and we'll pull those tight against the bottom of each cylinder and that will definitely help with cooling so i had to add some pieces here where inadvertently they were kind of left out 
And uh, so I would just, for those of you who are having cooling problems, I know sometimes uh, we forget to check the lower end of the baffles. These flanges can break off. There's a lot of pressure there and a lot of vibration. And then the air pressure will push this away from the cylinder and your temperatures will go up. And they're somewhat hidden. When, once they're installed, we tend to forget about them. And, uh, but I've seen it before. You all of a sudden notice you've got a you know, 15, 20 degree difference in a, in a cylinder temp. Lo and behold, it's one of the lower baffles has broken off or worn. So hopefully you get these all ready for paint today. It's been really miserable cold here in Atlanta. I think it was, what, 27 when we got up this morning. So hopefully it'll warm up a little bit today. We'll get the paint booth heated up. We'll get these painted. Uh, it's almost a shame to cover this big, beautiful Thunderbolt engine over here. So we're, we're going to do some red on the baffling to actually match the helicopter and uh, hopefully have these on this week then. And then we're going to add a new, uh, new feature to our, our videos this week because, uh, you know, I do these videos and Carol always says, what were you meaning by this? So we're going to call it Carol's Queries. And I know you have a question this week. What is it? So you always talk about um, carbureted engines, and I know this one isn't carbureted. And I saw that big box underneath, and you said it had something to do with the fuel injection. That's correct. So good question, the difference between carburation and injection. So let's talk about, and we're going to talk mainstream here because there's exceptions for everything, whether it's carburation or injection. But in aircraft engines, in a typical airplane, the engine is more horizontal, unlike this helicopter, where sometimes they're at an angle like this. And on some helicopters, like the Bells, uh, 47, is the, the engine is actually completely vertical. It's that way on the Safari helicopters as well. A carburetor, let's talk about a carburetor. It's been around uh, since the beginning of a piston engine. And I wish I had one here to show you, but think about this. A carburetor has a float in it and a bowl that keeps the level of the fuel in the bowl where it needs to be. So that carburetor needs to sit somewhat like this so that float is vertical. We can't take that carburetor and turn it on its side and expect it to work. Now, yes, there are exceptions, as I mentioned, like pressure carbs or throttle bodies, et cetera, but let's just talk about a standard carburetor on an aircraft engine that the majority of you are going to see. So that carburetor is gonna work one way, vertically, Okay, and they typically sit on the bottom of an aircraft engine, unlike carburetors in cars that can sit on top of the engine. A carburetor sitting there has to, the air has to go up its vertical, right? That's what's called a vertical induction on that engine. Now, if we're going to take that engine and mount it in a different way, or we want to get a little more efficiency out of the fuel distribution, because the reality is a carburetor and the fuel servo on an injection system, along with the spider, is just a way of distributing the fuel to the cylinders. It's much more efficient with an injected engine. Plus, the injected engine doesn't have a float, so it allows us to put this engine in any kind of angle and work. So if you come down here, I don't know if you can see this, this is the fuel servo, the red one. Is that showing up good enough, or should we get a light on it? Can you see that? Yes. Maybe if you walk around this way, you can see it much much better okay so this is an airflow performance injection this is what's known as the fuel servo or the throttle body okay and what it does is it senses air pressure air flow coming in here and then it sends fuel the correct amount of fuel up here to the distribution unit sometimes called the spider on top of the engine to actually have stainless lines going out to injectors in each cylinder. So you can see with an injected type system, we get an even amount of distribution, hopefully to the, each cylinder as opposed to a carburetor, which just disperses the fuel at one central point and then they go to all the cylinders. And then with the proper injectors, we can actually tweak these cylinders by changing out the nozzle diameter in each of the uh, injector uh, units here and make them perfect for each cylinder. So it makes a really nice smooth running uh, and temperature controlled engine doing that. So that some of the differences are a carburetor will work on pressures of like four or five PSI. Actually, they'll work down to about a half a PSI fuel pressure and all the way up to about eight PSI. We don't want to unseat that float if we have too much pressure. But injection systems require a much different setup. They typically require anywhere from 14 to 30 PSI. So we're gonna have a higher pressure 
fuel pump, you can see right there, that's going to come out to the engine driven pump on this side of the engine right down here. Okay. Now this diaphragm pump that you're looking at here can be used for both carbureted and injected engines. It's just a different pump physically looks the same. So it would be a smaller five PSI pump on the pressure, same physical size, or the, in this case, a 20, this one usually puts out around 27 PSI for the injector injected system. Does that answer your question? Uh, just one more question. Is this fully assembled or is there some kind of cover that goes on it? So this is completely assembled to the engine now. We've got throttle and mixture. And what will happen here is a tube is going to come up, a four inch air duct to an air filter right up here on the side of the helicopter, which I don't have mounted yet. Okay. Okay. So I think that's the update on the Hummingbird. Uh, the nice thing is we're starting to run out of parts. The boxes are, are, are being thrown away. There's no parts in them. The table where I had parts spread out is getting very empty. And uh, soon we'll be getting there. Thank you.